Welcome to the Turn Turn Academy. These videos are from the week ending April 11th, 2021. Let's go ahead and play this swing in slow motion. We see what I call tipping over here. And then he falls backwards here. Uh, prior to impact, he's actually moved in the wrong direction. Let's go back here to the setup position and we'll draw in that uh, power line that I use a lot. We'll draw it right down here. What we want to see is when he turns, his spine should be rotating so his spine ends up pretty much on that white line and his chest has moved quite a ways to our left, uh, his, his right. You can see what's happening. He's just dropping his shoulder straight down. It's not turning down past the golf ball. Now he's got this big tip over. Uh, you see the shape uh, of his lead side here, this curve. Uh, we don't want that. Uh, we want him to have shifted his weight. His hip should stay on the white line and he shouldn't collapse like he's doing here. He's actually collapsing down onto his right side. Uh, all his weights on his left, I mean on his left side, all his weights on his left toe. Then as he starts coming back, he's going to move the other way. He's actually going to fall away. See how the his back of his body is moving away. The other thing he's doing right here is he's under the golf club with his right hand. If you look, I'll clear the line out of the way. You can see the hand is under, uh, the uh, left hand is on top, the right hand is under the club. That's called a scoop shot, breaking it down. What, what we need to do is go from here to exactly that same spot on this side, and you can see that's not anywhere near that. Uh, we should be able to see the, the fingers of the glove hand about here in the forward part of the swing, which would delay the hit, create a more powerful strike, and then he could get his body moving up to the front. The reason he can't move is because he's locked in with his left elbow and left wrist locked him in, and you really can't extend the arm with a palm up. You can only extend your arm with the with a fully rotated right arm, uh, not just the hand. The whole arm has to rotate so you can stretch out that way uh, with the right arm. See, he doesn't do that. Ends up on the front side. It's just a little late. I talk a lot about golfers uh, swinging away from their power side. The power side is the right, uh, the left side of the lead side of your swing. What we want to be able to do is transfer our weight from our right side to our left side so we have all of the mass moving the club, which is increasing the force on the club, which increases the force on the golf ball. What we'll watch here in slow motion is you'll see he sways way off of it and stays off of it and then falls backwards when he hits it. So all of his weight is very clearly on the back side. That power line we draw in so often right up here, he's not anywhere near that. We've got to get him to learn how to transfer his weight onto his lead side, kind of like when we're walking. Uh, you would throw a baseball by transferring your weight onto the, onto the lead side. Uh, just about everything we do is a matter of transferring the weight. We just have to learn how to do it sideways in the game of golf. Here we get to see this flexibility and courage of youth. Uh, oftentimes, as we get older, we lose our... Um, flexibility and we have a tendency to lose our courage to act. Uh, the ability to just let it go freely. I'm going to play this in fast motion, regular motion, so you can see how fluid the swing is. I got that a little low off the face. Um, some of that's just learning, but what we'll see is let's take a look see what might have caused that. What I'll do is I'll draw in a spine tilt because more likely than not it's the spine tilt uh, that causes us to hit the ball thin. And I don't mean lifting your head. Your head is attached to your spine. Your spine is attached to uh, your back. And, I mean, your butt. And so let's watch what happens. We're going to take it back slowly. There's his lift right there. He's pulled up an inch and a half, two inches away from the ball. Then he's going to dive back down again. Not bad. Now he's way down. He's coming in. There goes his back. See, he's no longer on the plane. He's not rotating anymore. He's kind of hunched up in there. What we need him to do is maintain his spine tilt forward so his spine still should be on the white line. Then he's going to hit the ball on more of a descending blow where that fairway would. And he's not going to be pulling up as much. He's got great extension down the line. But we need to be able to have the hips rotate in front of the shoulders. The shoulders here are clearly passing the hips not the other way around. You see how the, the back is fully turned towards us? Uh, the back pockets of his shorts are not towards us. 
Uh, we lead the swing from the ground up, which means our feet go first, then our knees, then our hips, then our shoulders. Uh, we get to see another setup uh, of the young golfer, the flexibility of the young golfer. What we see in his setup is he's kind of tilting towards the target. We need him to tilt the other way. What he should be doing is having his whole lead side go straight up parallel like this. So his lead shoulder should be on that white line. As he turns back, he gets it there. But in order to do that, he's got to kind of tip over. Now he's lifting again. You can see that there's a lift. Now from right here, the first move should be the weight shifting to the inside of that foot. Then the knee should be moving to the, to the uh, right knee to the left knee. Then the right hip should be moving and the left hip should be moving onto the white line. But we don't see that. We see kind of a, a diving motion. Pretty good extension there. Pretty good impact position. Just a little late and, he, and he's falling backwards again. We see a lot of golfers fall backwards instead of getting up onto that power line and bracing himself up on that front leg. Too little, too late. Golfers are always telling me that they're, they, don't, they can't turn. Um, I, I don't have the capability of rotating. The fact of the matter is you do because you do it all the time. What we have to look at is what causes us not to rotate. And in this case, the cause is going to be what his right knee does on his downswing. So we'll start it back kind of slowly. It's a pretty good takeaway there, a little lifting there. But watch what happens to the right knee. You're going to see it move straight out over his right toes. When you're in that position there, you can't rotate your lower body. It's stuck. Uh, the right knee is going the wrong way. The knee had to turn towards the left knee. It can't go to the golf ball. Uh, that's moving all the motion in the wrong direction. It gets a real jammed up feeling. You can't even extend your body. You can't move your hip through. You want to sense that your, your uh, pelvis is thrusting out towards the target like that. Uh, his isn't. Uh, so he's jammed up. You can still see a lot of weight on his back leg. Look at the muscles of his back leg still firing off. A lot of weight on his toe. Uh, that is not transferring the weight the way he wants to. He has the ability to do that. What he has to do is learn how to get the right knee moving to the left knee earlier in the downswing. And that's simply practice. You can do all kinds of things to do that. One is to grab your, uh, your shorts down around your knee and just pull that through. The other one is trying to kick uh, a knee kick uh, to the left side of your body so you can get that knee up, knee thrusts. A lot of actions you can do. Uh, the step through drill is one. Um, a lot of those will, will work very, very well. But you have to know that you've got to do it then you can figure it out. As a coach, teacher, instructor for most of my life, whether it be my employees, clients, people I've coached in baseball or golf, I tell them you've got to know what to do first, then learn how to do it, and then get the ability to do it. If you don't know what you're supposed to do, chances are you're not going to do it. Um, I think some wise man called, it's important to know what you don't know. So we're going to watch this lady get up to the ball, Yes, what she doesn't know is that she can't just lift the club up. See, she's lifting the club up and ending up really jammed up close to her body. What she doesn't know is that the reason the left arm is bending that much is because the right arm, oh, right arm overbent. When the right arm overbends and the hands are connected, you have no choice but to bend the left arm. The right elbow should not bend past 90 degrees. So she's looking at that trying to figure out, what did I do? Well, let's go back, see if she does it again. That's exactly the same move. It's almost like it's a, a repeat. And then she finally hit a, hit a shot. Um, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in a, uh, another video of her. Uh, and we'll stop this one and I'll start another one. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, we just talked in the last video about how she has a tendency just to lift the club and overbend her right arm. Uh, which then brings the club in real close. You can really see it here really bends it in and then she's got her hands in an awkward position right there she's got her back straight up and down she's going to come in you see the, the club is way inside the thing way out on the toe off to the right is going to go the, the ball has no choice but to go to the right when you're hitting it out on the toe because the face is going to open up a little bit as it impacts and you have what's called a called roll and bulge in your driver the face of the driver is not flat like an iron it's actually curved so you hit her too far out on the toe, and it's going to go to the right. 
So we saw those two swings, that her practice swings, her rehearsal swings, were just like that. They're identical. Um, what we want to do is make sure that we get our, our uh, hands as far away from our chest as we can on our backswing. We had the golfer a minute ago who was uh, collapsing her arms so much that she got really close to her chest with her hands. This, this person is able to get a nice good wide distance. See how wide the distance is? Okay. That's, that's a pretty good width in our swing. It creates an oblong swing. We don't want a round swing. We want a swing that's oblong. That uh, uh, I don't know if I can do that in this machine. Why don't we try it? The, the swing should be this way, not just a circle. It should be oblong. It should be wider. So he's like you can see right here, he's in the narrow. Then he's going to get a little wider. Then he's going to go wide again. Oh, he didn't go wide. See, there's where he's collapsing down. He went narrow here. See how tight he is there? He needs to be as wide there as he is there. Again, we see this a lot with our amateur golfers. They have a tendency to want to get help the ball in the air so the right hand stays under the golf club in an effort to lift the ball in the air. Plus, we don't see him rotating onto the front side. We don't see this motion here of the, of the body rotating on. We stay back. Uh, when the heel spins out around behind you, like this one did right here, uh, you can't have your weight forward if the heel's going backwards because your weight's going backwards. So what we're going to do with this golfer is get him to rotate a little bit more, slow his swing down a bit, and learn how to get those hands extended down the target line so that, as my grandpa talked about, um, thumb up right here, both thumbs are up, and both thumbs should be up right here. But they're not, are they? Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. And right about there. That's way too late. Thumb up, thumb up. You release the club at both ends of the swing. You release the club here like you did there, but you also got to release it here and you really didn't. There he did. Sometimes a good swing doesn't always produce the best result. We have to look at the little things that we do. In this case, it was a little bit of movement. Uh, I'm going to draw in her uh, spine angle and her uh, shaft angle or the swing plane as we call it. There's the shaft angle. Here's your spine tilt, about 90 degrees, just like it should be. We're going to see a pretty good takeaway here in terms of motion. The club head is, uh, here's, here's the issue. You see right there, the hands are coming up. The hands should stay down. We turn the hands, we don't lift the club off the ground. So her hands are actually getting further away from her as she's, as she's using her hands. So she's getting pretty high here. The good news is, she's pretty close to on plane. Look at the nice shape of her uh, trail elbow is in the waiter position. Uh, the club face and the lead forearm are in the same place, same direction. So her hands are pretty much as they were set up. She just pulled up and out of the shot a little bit by lifting. Rather than taking the club back low and slow, she lifted it off the ground. You can do that, but it takes a lot of timing and athleticism. Let's see what happens if she comes back down again. Drops. Watch the elbow drop. And that's classic. That's really a good move. She's on plane or parallel to it. Right in through. Club is a little bit over the top here because she quit leading with the elbow at this point right here. She kept pulling the elbow through, pulling with the with the right elbow into the body towards the target line. It's not behind you. So then she comes in. And let's see why we didn't get a good shot or why it's not a good shot. It's not a good shot because it went off too low. Let's back it up a little bit and see if we can see at the moment of impact, did she hit any ground? Remember, we play golf with two balls, the big one we stand on, the little one we hit. I think she forgot to hit the one we're standing on. Yep, no dirt flying up at all. Cut a couple of grooves above the bottom of the club. It needs to be five grooves up. Other than that, it's a pretty good swing, good rhythm and tempo. But it's that commitment to get down to the ground that's important. Um, we have to commit to hitting the ground. Uh, with every swing except the putter and the driver, unless you're playing the driver off the ground on the fairway. Um, so when you hit it fat, you may think you did something wrong. The only thing you did was hit the ground in the wrong spot. Learn how to hit the ground where you want, then learn how to put the ball where it needs to be so you hit the ball, then the ground. Just a little bit ago, we had a golfer that lifted the hands uh, off the ground in the takeaway. Here we're going to see a golfer that takes the club pretty well straight back with the hands. See it staying right on the red line, still parallel. Now I'd like to see him turn his shoulders a little bit more, but he's not as young as he used to be. Of course, none of us are. 
But what he does is he creates the window that I talk about on the way down, where he's almost got the club parallel to the trail arm. Uh, it's, it's parallel to the lead arm, but at least it's not outside the lead arm. But by that I mean out here somewhere. Uh, we see that all, a lot, that's called over the top. We would like to see the club parallel to the trail arm at this point. He comes in, got his hands right back to where they were at impact. Nice dead straight shot, right down the line, exactly where we wanted to go. Good rhythm, good tempo, pretty good form. Uh, the kind of form that allows you to play golf and have fun. That's what it's all about. See you next time. This is Coach Dave. Have a good week.